So yes, I'm quite happy to be here. And um, my, the topic of my talk today is um, improving attacks on round reduced spec 3264 using deep learning. And um, I won't have, uh, there, there are quite a few results uh, in this paper, which I won't have much time to uh, tell you about. So I will start with giving you sort of a bird's eye view of the whole paper. And so the first thing that I'm doing is um, I, we, we are building um, um, differential distinguishers using machine learning for spec 3264, which are superior to um, classical differential distinguishers, even using the full um, difference distribution table, which we also calculate for up to eight rounds of spec and one chosen input difference. And um, these um, um, neural network-based distinguishers achieve a higher um, classification accuracy than the, than the differential distinguisher based on the full difference distribution table. And the reason it can do this is that the neural network-based distinct distinguisher um, exploits um, the ciphertext pair difference instead of, the, instead of the distribution of differences. Then, um, having these distinguishers, um, we use Bayesian optimization. That is basically, that's a um, generic optimization procedure that is used, um, for instance, in machine learning to optimize uh, hyperparameter sets. Basically, it's a, a method that takes a function that is difficult to optimize, but where something about the shape of the function is known and where you want to um, find maybe the maximum of the function and uh, tries to um, gain from some few evaluations of that expensive to evaluate function some knowledge about where the maximum is. And we apply this to, um, to the problem of uh, searching for the last round key in uh, spec encryption using one of our uh, neural distinguishers. And this leads to an attack that, is, that uses um, very few trial decryptions, namely for 11 rounds. For our 11 round attack, we have in total a few million trial de decryptions that we do. And that's roughly, that's a few million times less than the best attacks on 11 rounds um, that were previously in the literature. So the best previous attacks take about two to the 45 trial decryptions. And um, our attack takes a few million trial decryptions. However, um, evaluating a neural network is expensive, so this um, advantage doesn't fully translate to a, to, to a speed up of the attack. What we get in the end for 11 rounds of spec is an attack that is roughly 200 times faster than the state of the art. And um, we use also manual cryptanalysis. We use manual cryptanalysis to define learning tasks, to design the overall attack, and to extend trained distinguishers to more rounds. And um, you can absolutely try that at home because there is um, code available on GitHub. So um, one other thing that is different um, about this attack compared to previous attacks is that this attack does not use the key schedule, whereas the best previous attacks, they uh, generate a large number of candidates for the last four round keys and then test every um, every one of those keys against a known uh, plain text ciphertext pair. And this is only possible because the, um, because the uh, key schedule is eff efficiently invertible. And um, this attack, that, um, that this uh, neural network-based attack doesn't need that because we can solve for the round keys one by one. So we would be able to um, break 11 round spec with essentially the same um, complexity also if it used the free cat free key schedule, or if the key schedule was changed um, to not be efficiently invertible anymore. So it's a bit more um, a bit more resilient against changes in key schedule. Uh, the neural distinguishers, um, they uh, can, we, we also show that they can efficiently recognize um, sort of uh, randomized output ciphertext pairs. So, so if you take a pair of, of um, 32 bit values, and this pair has a, corresponds to a high likelihood output difference, and it's not necessarily um, a pair that would appear with high likelihood in the output distribution, and um, the neural distinguishers can recognize that, unlike, um, unlike uh, traditional differential distinguishers. 
And um, we, in the paper, we show some actual examples of this. So we show, for instance, one example of a ciphertext pair that gets an almost zero neural distinguisher score, and which, but which belongs to a two to the minus 26 uh, likelihood uh, output difference. And it has, in fact, we, we show that it has a zero chance of being an actual, uh, that it cannot be, that it's an impossible output pair, actually. And then one, one other thing that we do in the paper is we use few-shot learning on cryptographic problems. Few-shot learning is something that um, is, a, well, I mean, a common, um, a, common, um, a common idea about machine learning is that when you do, you, you might be able to do interesting things with machine learning, but you need lots of data. Whereas we humans, we can sometimes learn from one example or a few examples of some problem and um, do useful inference about that problem um, later on. And in machine learning, this is also possible. There are a range of techniques that go under the heading of few-shot learning. So you show a machine learning algorithm just a few examples of some output distribution, and then it might be able to recognize that output distribution. And we also show that this is, um, to some extent, with some prior knowledge, that this is possible to do on spec. So we can observe, for instance, three-round spec for a few million examples with a random input difference, and then give it a six-round spec to classify. And after seeing a few examples of the new distribution, it will get, it will, it will get a distinguisher that has some statistically, some, some advantage that is uh, very statistically significant uh, over random guessing. And we can also use the few-shot learning capability to find good input differences if we didn't know them um, without using prior cryptanalysis. Finally, in the paper, we also deliver some partial insight into the source of the additional signal, basically showing that the neural networks um, have an internal data representation that groups the um, output ciphertext pairs into some more fine-grained um, system of equivalence classes than the difference equivalence classes. And as an additional benchmark, we also develop differential distinguishers for five-round spec that exploits the ciphertext pair distribution perfectly. And these are, of course, then a little bit better than the neural networks. So they, yeah, they are a little bit better, but also much slower. So spec is a, a family of block ciphers um, designed by the NSA in 2013. And um, what the, the member of this family that we are looking at today is SPEC 3264, and this is the smallest uh, member of this family. It's a lightweight error X construction, has, has 22 rounds, and um, it has a nonlinear key schedule that basically reuses the round function. In prior work, um, the best attacks on 11 round specs used about 2 to the 46 reduced spec encryptions. Um, and used uh, 2 to the 14 chosen plain text on average. There are also attacks on 12 to, 5 to 14 rounds, um, and, but they have higher complexity, and uh, these attacks, they would all depend on the key schedule being efficiently invertible, whereas uh, our attack breaks 11 rounds in roughly 15 minutes on average on one thread of a normal single on, on a normal desktop computer. And this is roughly equivalent to about 2 to the 38 reduced spec encryptions. And um, one thing that I should probably emphasize is that this represents one time data trade-off among many. So if we used more data, we could build faster attacks, for instance. So we could be r roughly about a factor of 10 or maybe 20 faster if we used um, a lot more data. Um, but this, uh, in, with, with, with these settings, the attack is comparable in data complexity to the best attacks that are known. And so it makes the attack nicely comparable to the literature. Now, to calculate the difference distribution of, uh, of uh, round reduced spec, uh, what to, to get a baseline for our distinguishers, we do basically just uh, the just standard things. So we treat the uh, we treat spec um, we treat the um, differential transitions from one round to the other as a Markov chain with two to the thirty-two minus one possible states, and we calculate the distribution, the predicted distribution of that Markov uh, of that Markov process given one known input difference, and this gives us one row of the difference distribution table for spec thirty-two sixty-four. 
and we choose this input difference here, which is, uh, which, oops, we choose this input difference here, which is um, known from the literature. We calculate the induced difference distribution. Then there are various sources of model error. For instance, we use double precision arithmetic and not exact, exact arithmetic. Then there could be dependencies between transitions. Um, but empirically, this model works very well. I mean, we have checked some of, we have checked, for instance, the highest likelihood transitions, and they are predicted extremely well by this model. And uh, the whole process is straightforward, but it's somewhat expensive. It takes a few hundred CPU days of computing time and about 35 gigabytes of memory for the final computed difference distribution table. Machine learning is, um, a, a, is an umbrella term for various techniques that aim to make agents or machines learn from experience. It's very useful for some problems that are for also for some high profile problems. But it's also not difficult to find simple problems where a naive ML approach would fail or struggle very badly to find a solution. For instance, um, just if you dumped 64-bit uh, numbers and their parity on a neural network um, without doing anything else, then I think it, that would be a fairly hard problem for the neural network to learn to calculate the parity. You can do it, but you have to, you have to um, give it some other, some other training data. And uh, there have been uh, spectacular successes in recent time, for instance, the game of Go or poker or machine translation. And I think it's also important to realize that these mostly use machine learning just as one crucial part of a larger problem solving system. And that's not different here. So a neural network is basically um, a, a differentiable family of functions that is parameterized by some weights. So you have some inputs going in. Here at the, uh, you have some inputs going in at the input layer, and these inputs are then multiplied. These are real valued values. They are then multiplied by some real valued weights. Then you apply some activation functions and pass to the next layer. And you can um, approximate a wide a range of functions um, by these neural networks. And to find a good neural network for a particular problem, you define a loss function, you uh, let it loose on training data, and you try then to find good weights by stochastic gradient descent. And then you test your system, whether your system actually has learned anything. You, test, you find out by testing it on some other data, on data that is not the training data. So in cryptology, machine learning hasn't been used very much. And um, I think the outlook of the community has been fairly bleak in terms of um, machine learning being useful for crypt analysis. For instance, so I have found here two quotes, one by Bruce Schneier um, from his textbook, Applied Cryptography. Neural nets work well in structured environments, but not in the high entropy, seemingly random world of cryptography. And then another quote from two machine learning researchers who wrote a fairly high profile paper on um, two neural networks that learned to protect their communications from a third network, uh, Eve, that was trying to break their communications. And they also wrote neural networks are generally not meant to be great at cryptography. So I think this sums up the community view, the prevailing view, fairly well. But there have been a lot of works on side channel analysis. So there have been some other works on um, machine learning in cryptology. There is some work by Klimov, Mityagin, and Shamir, who used neural networks to break a public key encryption scheme that was itself based on neural networks. Then one work by Sam Gradanus building a model of the Enigma using a recurrent neural network. And also there's a, work, a recent work from ICLR 2018 that uh, showed that GANs can break simple short period Visionaire ciphers in an unsupervised setting. That was a work aimed at um, improving machine, trans, machine uh, translation techniques. So to train a distinguisher for reduced spec, we just generate a few million real and random examples, or ciphertext pairs. This is our chosen input difference for the real pairs. And this is very quick. This takes a few seconds. Then we train a deep residual neural network. That's a type of network that has been quite successful for a variety of applications, from um, image recognition to board games. Um, and then we, and for five to seven rounds of spec encryption, if you have a GTX 180 Ti graphics card, that gives you a better classifier than the difference distribution table after a few minutes of calculation. So this is very quick. 
And for seven rounds, you can also use a slightly more expensive training scheme to get some better network. And for eight rounds, you just fail, but you can use curricular training, i.e. designing a sequence of, um, a sequence of uh, intermediate tasks to learn on, and uh, then you get also a distinguisher. These distinguishers, they are quite small. They have about 44,000 weights. And you, if you truncate the uh, weights of the seven round distinguisher to 16 bit floats, then this doesn't seem to hurt the distinguisher. So you can pack the distinguisher in about 90 KB storage instead of 35 gigabytes for the uh, difference distribution table. And the results are quite good. You get, uh, we get um, better. Um, better accuracy than the difference distribution table uh, across the board in all of these tasks for five to eight rounds. And the advantages, advantages are quite small, but um, if you have uh, more than one ciphertext pair, then of course it will, uh, this advantage will be, will be larger. Um, so to build a nine round attack from this, we take the seven round distinguishers, we add one round at the bottom by manipulating the inputs, which we can do because the first um, addition of a round key happens after the only nonlinear operation, which is, the, uh, which is the modular addition. And we add one round uh, at the top by brute force trial decryption, and then we use a number of chosen plain text pairs. So we use in this case, for instance, 64. And, uh, classify either by the difference distribution table or by the neural network. And when we do this, we see that the neural network get, gives much better uh, mean and median key ranks than the difference distribution table. So for instance, the median key rank of the neural network is one and the difference distribution table is nine. So it's, well, it's, the mean is roughly five times lower. So then to build, a, uh, to build an, an effective um, attack, an, eff an effective key recovery policy, we look at the wrong key randomization hypothesis, which would, if, if the wrong key randomization hypothesis were to hold, then wrong key decryptions would tell you nothing. So you would maybe see one of, uh, you would see maybe one, one ciphertext pair being uh, much higher rated than all the others, but you wouldn't, but from the wrong key decryptions, you wouldn't get any information. About the, uh, about the value of the real uh, subkey that you are targeting. But if you look at the, um, at the uh, distinguisher response of the neural distinguisher as a, as a um, function of the difference, of the bitwise difference of the wrong key to the real key, then you actually see that there's a lot of information in, there, in, the, in the wrong key descriptions. And we use that by we use that by uh, trying to decrypt a small set of ciphertexts under a few random keys. Then we observe the average distinguisher response, and then we derive a new set of key hypotheses that maximizes the likelihood of the distinguisher responses. And we repeat this a few times, like three or five times, with maybe something like 32 keys. And then one of those keys that we find will usually be the, the right key. And, um, and to build an 11 round attack, we uh, then extend this nine round attack to 11 rounds by adding a two round initial difference tra differential trail. We recreate the conditions of the nine round attack, i.e. that we have uh, a couple of um, plain text pairs with this desired input difference by using some neutral bits for the initial two round trail. And we apply the key search policy to derive a short list of key candidates and we detect success by looking at distinguisher scores returned. And if the scores look good, then we derive a short list of key candidates for one more round. And if those scores then look good, uh, which are then judged by uh, another neural distinguisher for one less round, then uh, if they are sufficiently high, we output a key guess for the last two round keys. And otherwise, we ask for more data. Or we look again at data already acquired. So in conclusion, um, I think one can say machine learning worked really well in this instance. The neural network efficiently exploits the ciphertext pair distribution. Um, it is crucial to choose the right learning task and choosing a good model structure to, in order to be successful. Um, we also use some manual crypt analysis to derive a competitive attack from the distinguishers. Um, we automatically more or less derived an efficient key search policy that is very helpful to, for making a fast attack. And one thing that I would like to also add is that in that neural networks that are not, they, they have a, 
reputation for being black boxes, but in this context, I think it's more, it's more appropriate to think of them as gray boxes because, for instance, with just access to a black box distinguisher, you wouldn't do, be able to do the few shot learning, but with access to a neural network that has learned to recognize three rounds back, you can very quickly then learn to recognize six rounds back with a good chosen input distribution. And again, the code is all on GitHub, and that's, with that, I'm done. Uh, thank you very much. I think an immediate question would be whether this applies also to Simon. The, whether what? The techniques apply also to other block ciphers? Um, I expect they will apply to other block ciphers, yeah. I, I, I would expect so. Um, I mean, you may not be able, I think for Markov ciphers, you shouldn't obviously be able to get uh, something, a distinguisher ever that is better than the difference distribution table. But I would, uh, there's nothing, I think, that is spec specific here. And I didn't try it on a million ciphers. I tried it on one cipher on, on spec and it worked for spec. So I would definitely expect that this will work for other ciphers mm -hmm. here. Okay, is there any other question? Thanks for a fascinating talk. Um, I have a question about uh, an alternative uh, technique which is uh, used by the machine learning community. And this is the autoencoder approach. <clears throat> when you are trying to uh, uh, use autoencoder, you try to teach the, uh, uh, the machine learning to find a kind of condensed representation of the data mm. that it is given. Are you aware of anyone who uh, tried uh, to use autoencoders and whether he was successful in uh, cryptanalytic uh, approaches? Maybe you are giving a bunch of uh, plain text and a bunch of ciphertexts. Mm -hmm. You are trying to find a concise representation that will translate the uh, multiple plain text to multiple cipher text. I, I'm not aware of anybody who has tried this. I've tried some. I, I've tried some um, some unsupervised techniques to find some connections between uh, between plain text and cipher text. Uh, I, I haven't tried the autoencoder, um, but I've tried some other techniques that was. Uh, the results weren't uninteresting, but there was nothing sort of that, that, that was clearly better than the known techniques that, that I found in that area. Thanks. Any further question? Then let's thank the author again.